finally all the camp kids are gone and I can just really... No. Guys, come on. I only have like 20 minutes before class again. Like, please, please. No. Oh, fine. If your goal is to do this, Then keep watching. Hey guys, my name is Zach Ferguson, and this channel is all about helping you guys reach your tricking goals. I may not be the best tricker, but hopefully my experience can help you guys become the best. This is a tutorial for a macaco. In this tutorial, I'm gonna go over two different ways to get your macaco. The first way is from a cartwheel. If you don't know how, I'll teach you a little bit really quick in this tutorial because it's not that hard to learn. And the second way is a scoot. Since last week I did a scoot tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to turn your scoot into a macaco. And even though I seemed like I wasn't prepared, proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. So here's a quick tutorial. All right, so what is a macaco? A macaco is essentially a crab position to a cartwheel or a crab position to a jumping bridge motion where you come down on your left foot, your right foot, or a round off. A macaco can land one of those three ways and still be a macaco. It really kind of just depends on how you start it. So a macaco and a Valdez are gonna be extremely similar, but slightly different because a macaco, you plant your hand before you jump and a Valdez, you jump before you plant your hand. That's really the distinction between those two. Of course, there's always gonna be a little bit of gray area where you kind of maybe jump this much before you macaco or, you know, something like that. But essentially, if your arm goes over the top and you jump like you're doing a one hand back handspring, that's a Valdez. If your arm goes backwards sideways and then you arch around that motion, then it's a macaco. You can also do macacos two-handed or one-handed. It doesn't really matter in my opinion. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't really know a difference between a name of a one-handed macaco or a two-handed macaco. Valdez seems like that, but again, like I was saying, it's kind of the shoulder position and whether you jump beforehand, Valdez is basically a one-handed back handspring and Macaco is a crab position planted to a pivot around your shoulder and then come down like a back handspring, cartwheel or scoot. So for both of these methods, we're going to use a line again, just like on the last tutorial. And this is just because you want to understand where your direction of momentum is going on this. And it will help you understand how to kind of turn one trick into the other trick because this is really dependent on your shoulder position, your direction of momentum, and how your legs move. If you twist too much, for example, it's not gonna turn into a macaco. You're basically just gonna be doing a cartwheel or some kind of like pseudo master swipe, b-boy master swipe type move. But I'll show you what I mean. Let's jump into it. So whether you're doing a tricking cartwheel or a gymnastics cartwheel, it doesn't matter. It just needs to be some kind of cartwheel. If you don't know how to cartwheel, did you even go to elementary school? But like if you're homeschooled, I understand. Okay, 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 chill. I'll teach you really quick. So what you wanna do is you want to start in a lunge and then reach down with your left hand, kick your right leg as hard as possible backwards and then plant your right hand and land on that right leg. Obviously, right hand and left leg if you turn to your right. If you're having trouble with your cartwheel and you're not landing it, it's probably because you are bending your legs. Make sure that your legs are straight the entire time. Kick completely backwards and then try to pivot 180 when you are doing your cartwheel so that you can land facing the other direction when you land your cartwheel. So you wanna start facing one direction in a lunge and then you want to turn 180 upside down and face the other direction and land in the other side lunge to end. All right. 
So to turn your car wheel into a macaco, what you're gonna wanna do is start in a crab position, and then from that crab position, place your left hand backwards. Again, teaching this on my left side. I don't have to say this every video, but I just want to make sure that you guys understand that you wanna twist to one direction, and I twist to my left, so I'm teaching this to my left side. So start in your crab position with both hands, then pick up your right hand. You wanna be only on your left hand at the beginning for this motion. Make sure that your butt is not on the ground for this method. We are just gonna start completely from two feet on the floor and only your left hand touching. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cartwheel out to the side. So on both of these methods, you're gonna be sort of like the hands of a clock. Your line is gonna dictate where you are going based on that clock. You'll see what I mean. So start slightly off to the side of the line and place your left hand on that line. From there, look over where you want to land. Then you're gonna reach with your right arm in the direction you wanna land, plant your right hand, and then jump off both feet and land on only your right foot. Land like you would normally land a cartwheel, and then we'll move on. From there, you want to progress farther and farther backwards. So wherever you reach with your right arm is gonna dictate where you go. Once you get the hang of this, you want to start minimizing your twist. The easiest way to do this is to start reaching more backwards and not as much across your chest. If you reach across your chest at this point, it's gonna make it harder for you to look like a macaco. Start with your feet in the same position every single time and your hands somewhere around the same position so that you know you're making progress. Your goal is to move around in a circle pattern, progressively getting farther and farther around this circle until you can land back on the line. The key is to keep your eyes on where you wanna land. If you you don't keep your eyes on where you want to land, then you're not telling your feet where to land. In tricking, if we're doing a flip or an upside down motion, then you always want to spot your landing unless you can't see it at that time. But when you're coming down, spot your landing. If you're doing a kick, you want to spot where you are kicking. The reason is your body will follow your eyes and specifically your feet will follow your eyes because that's kind of just how we're made. If we are jumping to something, if we're not looking at it, it's incredibly hard to land on it. So keep your eyes fixed on where you want to land. Try to aim your right hand to that point and then put your right foot right next to that right hand. If you're having trouble, there are three different things that might be stopping you. You might not be jumping enough. A lot of times beginners do not jump hard enough and this is almost the most detrimental thing in my opinion. You need to jump as hard as you can off of both feet at the exact same time and push up but also push backwards with your legs. The other thing you may not be doing is arching enough. This is really a pelvic thrust motion, just kind of like rise. You need to push your belly button and your hips to the sky when you're doing this. If you don't, then you're going to collapse. And the third thing is you might be afraid to kind of go on one hand. So this might be causing you to concave your shoulders rather than making them uh, pushed out and kind of convex. You really want to make the shoulder push forward like this. Always have the other hand there for support, but mostly it's gonna be that base hand that's doing all the work. You wanna essentially get to a handstand and then just come down from your handstand. If you are pushing yourself too hard with your arm, then you might be pushing yourself back the direction you came from. Again, like I was saying, try to get to a handstand. If you can macaco up and stop in a handstand, that's kind of advanced, because then you can do a bunch of different things out of your macaco. But either way, you just keep progressing over and over around that circle like you are the hands of a clock until you can get back to that line. Remember to stop reaching across your chest with your right arm and reach more here. The more you can reach backwards, the better your form is gonna be. So it's left arm back, right arm reaches up on this side of your head and your eyes are looking there the whole time. What I like to do is I like to start with my eyes facing backwards the whole time so I know where I'm looking. So if I'm doing a macaco, it'll look something like this. I will have my eyes here the entire time, and then I plant my hand, and then I reach. So again, if I reach here, I'm gonna cross, but if I reach here, then it will promote that arch and it'll allow me to macaco with proper form. If you keep progressing and then you can land back on the line and take off of two legs and land on your right leg or two legs or your left leg, then you've done a macaco. Once you can do this and you can land on your right foot every time, try to switch legs. It's kind of a little signifier of how good your form is. If you can only land on your right leg, then that means you're twisting too much and you're kind of giving yourself the illusion that you have a good macaco, but you're kind of doing a hollow position rather than an arch. And for the second method, we're gonna turn your scoot into a macaco. These two methods are extremely similar. You're going to be the hands of a clock going around a clock face and you're gonna stay on this line the entire time if possible. 
The difference here is it's a little lower energy, but it forces you to do better form earlier, and then later you can just switch legs. But I've taught people both ways, and some people prefer the cartwheel method, some people prefer the scoop method. And sometimes, no matter how you learn it, it's hard to switch legs afterwards. I have students that think it's easier to land on their left leg, even though that's better form and harder technically, but it's harder for them to land on their right leg because they've only learned it that way. Either way, what you're gonna do is you're going to start sitting on the line with your left leg straight out in front of you. Then you're gonna plant that hand backwards, the left hand, on the line, in line with your butt and your foot and your entire leg. So everything should be on the line on your left side. Your right side should be completely off the line. From there, what you're gonna do is you're simply gonna scoot. So you're gonna push off with your right foot and then you're going to kind of scoot a little out in front of you and a little bit to the side at the same time and just do a scoot and try to turn back to facing your hand. Keep your hand planted the entire time so that you know how far you're going around this clock face. You can also record yourself and see it for yourself. Push those hips up and make sure that your leg is kind of straight when you're doing this so that way you are driving through your hips and not closing them and concaving again like I was saying. Again, just like the last method, keep your eyes where you wanna land. Everything is left side dominant on this one. So your left hand is down, you're looking at where you wanna land and you are jumping off of your right foot and landing on the point you're looking at with your left foot. Every single time, try to land in an eagle position like you're doing a scoot. This is really important because later on, if you are crunched up, it's gonna be hard to land it when you are doing like bigger or more over the top macacos. So make sure you drive home that eagle position with your right leg behind you at the end. Just like on the last one, progress farther and farther and farther around this circle by arching your back, pushing your hips forward, aiming with your foot, and landing at different points around the circle until you can get back to the line. You can put markers down, as in chalk marks or something to land on and make an actual clock face if you want to, and then try to aim and land on each of those points to really drive home where you need to go. Just like on the last one, make sure you are not pushing too hard with your arm and pushing yourself back forward. Make sure you are driving your hips to the sky and aiming where you wanna land with your eyes and your foot. And eventually, if you're jumping hard enough, arching hard enough, and keeping your eyes on a point, you can land back on the line. And now, once you have landed on the line or at least semi close to the line with your left hand only and your left foot only, it's time to start reaching with your right arm and going to two feet. You can do these separately if you want to, but I think putting them together is not that big a deal. If it's confusing for you, just do the scoot technique, but land your right hand, or just do the two foot takeoff and stay on one hand, but I'm gonna do them both at the same time. What you wanna do now is you wanna start in that crab position on two feet, and then you wanna kinda just rock back and forth for momentum. Obviously, you can rock back and forth on the other method for momentum. And then from there, what you're going to do is you're gonna reach with your second hand, your right hand, but this time you're going to try and make sure it lands next to your left hand. So I don't care where you are aiming with your right hand, except for right next to your left. So don't cross and make sure you're reaching this way, but don't be as concerned about that as much as landing with your hands next to each other because your left hand is your guiding light on this method and all you have to do is put your right hand next to your left hand and you will arch and you will move in the correct direction. It is possible to cross your chest very aggressively and put your hand next to it. So if that's happening, just focus on arching, but hopefully if you can land on the line with your left hand and your left foot only, all you gotta do is like high five the ground with your right hand and it'll be easy. It should also be easier now because you're jumping off of two feet, whereas before you were just jumping off of one. And once you have one of those two methods, you can progress to standing up. So I would recommend doing it all on the ground or down low first, and then doing it standing up. So now we're gonna go over how to transition from standing to a macaco. So no matter which method you chose, what you're gonna do now is you're gonna start uh, standing backwards to where you wanna go. So kind of think of it like you're falling backwards and then your momentum is falling backwards just like a back handspring. From there, what you wanna do is you wanna squat completely down. Most people make the mistake of trying to jump too high, too fast in your macaco and they hurt their wrists, so be careful of that. Squat as low as possible and basically treat it like you are about to do a back roll or something. You want to squat and then when your balance breaks, that's when you reach backwards and that's when you start your macaco. Also, when you're doing your crab position and you're reaching backwards for any of these progressions, Make sure your fingers are turned backwards. I think I forgot to mention that. 
Don't break your wrist, have your fingers turned backwards. So again, eyes on where you wanna go, squat all the way down, and then reach backwards, plant the hand, and then do everything the same. Jump as hard as you can, reach with both arms, look at where you wanna land, and land on your left or right foot. From there, it's just getting smoother and smoother. Start standing up, squat all the way down, touch your hand, go. Make it faster, make it faster, make it faster, and then you got a really good makako. Makako is extremely useful as a teaching tool. It can help you with touchdown rise. It can help you learn back handspring. It can help you learn backflip. It can help you learn tons of different stuff. So get your makako. Not only is it a great progression for learning other skills, but it's a really cool trick in its own. And things like makako hand spins, like Matthias can do and stuff, like that's sick. I want to learn that. But again, I have literally one minute before I start class. So. Please like the video if it was helpful to you and subscribe down below to help me on my quest to a thousand subs. Leave a comment down below and I will see you guys next time.